Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest this week is Nashville Representative John Ray Clemens. We're talking about the special session of the legislature that begins on Monday. We're not going to talk about that bill, the DUI bill anymore, that brought them back to town. We are going to talk about another measure, Representative uh, Clemens, that is going to come up. It's apparently a procedural issue, so the legislature can take it up, and that's the ousting of, of uh, Jeremy Durham, the Franklin representative, who, who was a state attorney general's study that found he had sexually harassed 22 women on the Hill. Speaker Harwell has wanted to have him ousted, uh, couldn't get a special session called earlier on her own. Nobody in the lawmakers, no, two-thirds of them were not even close to wanting to come back. Now they're in town, so we'll go ahead and bring it up. Should he be ousted, in your opinion? Oh, he should absolutely be ousted, in my opinion. He, he has simply uh, foregone the right to any pension in, in the state of Tennessee. He has, and if uh, you don't oust him in this particular case, even though he's been defeated for re-election, he'll still get the pension. Right, yeah. He, he will have served his four years. That makes him uh, qualified for the pension. And we need to do whatever is necessary. I was the first Democrat to show up in General McCormick's office and sign that petition to call a special session to oust him. I still think we need to oust him. Uh, it's the right thing to do. I, the damage he calls cannot be undone, but we need to do whatever we can to right the situation. By the way, um, the, uh, since the speaker has brought it up, is it your thought then that she wouldn't bring it up unless she knows she has the 66 votes it will take to oust him? Well, I can't speak for the speaker. She certainly, um, based on her earlier comments, she had no desire um, until recently to have a uh, ouster vote. Um, but now she seems to have changed her mind on that and seems to be proceeding as planned. And, and honestly, I can't think of a single person that would think it appropriate based on what is in the record uh, not to oust him. Now, Jeremy Duran says he may be present if he can have a chance to present his case and face his accusers. He does point out that he's not charged with any crime. There's never really been even an actual viol uh, uh, complaint made against him by state human resources people to say they've been sexually harassed. But that gets a little bit difficult when you're dealing with something like that because of the, the nature of sexual harassment. It is. I mean, it's, it's obviously a concern. We want to do whatever we can to protect these women from further harm. They've already been exposed to a great deal of harm. And to any extent, he wants to have a hearing uh, that would expose these women and present them to further harm. I would certainly be opposed to that. But if Der Jeremy Durham wants a trial, then I want to be able to cross-examine him. Because you are an attorney as well, and there's several of them. But the legislature doesn't generally act in a in a legal proceeding like that. Would he even be allowed to bring his own lawyer and have his lawyer come present his side? I don't ever remember anybody who is not a member of that body other than the governor coming and speaking to them. Yeah, no, I, I've never heard of such. We're, we're, we're in uncharted territory, I think it's fair to say. And the speaker runs the House. The speaker, uh, you know, if, if, however she wants this to go down, she, it, it will go down the way the speaker directs it. Uh, Jeremy Duran says if he's not provided to this, this will, if he's ousted, it will sort of be like a medieval beheading. And in the sense that he's not been charged with an actual crime, there's no actual complaint against him, just this report by the AG, is that enough for lawmakers to kick him out of office? Well, with regard to Representative Durham's comments, I think in, us in the South, we generally say bless his heart. And that's kind of where I fall down uh, on this topic. I, I think it's time to, to deal with him uh, wh however he considers it. Um, that's, up, that's up to Jeremy Durham, but he knows what he's done. The record is pretty clear, and I don't think he deserves one red cent of taxpayer dollars for a pension. Now, there's another uh, lawmaker involved that's had some problems since the legislature left town back in the spring, and that's Democrat Joe Armstrong from Knoxville. Mm -hmm. He's been convicted on federal charges. He's, he has a felony on his record now. Uh, some are talking about, well, if we're going to kick out Jeremy Durham, we need to kick him out as well. Where are the Democrats going to be? Are you okay about this being a bipartisan kicking out of one in each party? Or if Armstrong's involved in it, does that mean you'd vote no even on the Durham resolution? Well, again, this is uncharted territory. Uh, based on my reading of the law, Representative Armstrong is no longer a member. The law says you can, once but you convict not, But he has not resigned at this point. He, he has not resigned to the best of my knowledge, and I'm not speaking with any of my colleagues about it. However, the law says that once you're convicted of a felony, you cannot qualify for public office and you cannot hold public office. So in my opinion, my legal opinion, uh, I, I don't think that Representative Armstrong is, is any a member any longer. And so any vote would be ceremonial in nature. Uh, and, and to what time and attention we need to give that, I think the Speaker will make Make her decision. As I said, she runs the House, and, and it's up to her to uh, make that decision. 
What has this done overall to the image of the legislature? Not that it was great necessarily to begin with, but here the, the legislatures, if they take any action on Durham, are kind of like an afterthought. Well, we're already here anyway. Let's go ahead and deal with it. They didn't want to come back for a special session. This has been a stain on the body for some time. How do you? Ch how does the the legislature recover from that. I mean, Speaker Harwell has some new rules and regulations. Are they going to be effective? Are they going to make the legislature a better place to be? And we don't see sexual harassment charges coming up there all the time. Well, as you know, rules are only as good as they're enforced. Um, I hope, and I take personal offense, that the body which I am proud to serve in uh, has taken this kind of hit that you've described. Uh, those of us who go up there to do the right thing, to serve the people of Tennessee with their best interests in mind, focused on legislation, it is offensive to us. And so moving forward, I think every single member of the legislature has a duty to make sure this doesn't happen, happen again. Whether there's new rules in place um, or, or not, and whether they're enforced or not, each of us as men, especially, as well as women, have a duty to protect those working in our environment and not allow this type of behavior to happen. Those of us who weren't responsible for the risk, it, it, it's not an excuse. We all have a duty to make sure we prevent this in the future and stand up for women. Moving back to the idea of a special session, there are some who are a little critical of the governor for calling this about the loss of federal highway funds at a time when there's hundreds of millions of federal dollars that we're not taking in Tennessee because we haven't expanded our Medicaid program. Now, the governor did bring Insure Tennessee in in a special session, and it failed there. He says he's not bringing it back because nothing's changed in the legislature, and he's probably right about that, right? There's not, there's not Repub enough Republican votes to pass this, is there? In sure Tennessee, if it came back this time? Well, I would hope there would be. I feel like the first time the... What's, what's changed? Well, uh, uh, 18 months have passed. Uh, their excuse on the front end was they didn't have enough time to consider it. Uh, so now they've had plenty of time to consider it. A lot of my colleagues, unfortunately, legislate out of fear from the right. Um, and rather than representing the interests of their constituents, they represent out, out of fear for someone coming in with a lot of money and primarying them. So here we are after the primary. Those in, in office have who've won their primaries, um, that should be off the table and they should get focused on what their constituents want. And polls show that an overwhelming number of Tennesseans want Insure Tennessee. It's the right thing to do. It would provide quality, affordable health insurance to over 280,000 Tennesseans and their families, as well as 28,000 veterans. Here we are celebrating Marine Week, yet we can't provide veterans who served our state and country access to insurance. That's offensive in itself. And so I think we have a duty to the people of Tennessee to bring this back up. And I'd like to see some leadership out of Governor Haslam on his own plan. John Ray Clemens, our guest, he's a Nashville State Representative. We're talking about legislative issues as the legislature goes back in a special session on Monday, not on the topic of Insure Tennessee, but on the topic of fixing a DUI law. It could cost the state up to $60 million if we don't change it. Back to continue our conversation with Representative Clemens after this break.